Members of the Senate, please be seated. This morning, we are honored to have Mr. Jerome Sue offer a moment of contemplation. Good morning, everyone. Thanks for being here. Thanks for showing up. Please take a breath with me. I'll be reading a poem that was written uh, for this day. It's a great honor to speak to all of you pub public servants. It's called Altruism, Words, Unicorns. For years, I would hang my hat every night on the word altruism, striving to embody such definitively unselfish behavior, slumbering at the end of so many long days, wrapped tightly in devotion to stories that I was helping other people, fixing pieces of that broken world out there with an audacious vision that I could transcend my own selfishness, enthralled by the most seductive fantasy where I would encounter a purer love in some secret, sacred place beyond the ego. And yet, this word is a dream, like so many other dreams, wherein each component seems plausible enough that perhaps the composite could be real. All the horns on creatures and all the horses we've seen feeds a specious suspicion that a unicorn might be real too. Of course, not one was found. And so, I awoke with a seed of doubt. Perhaps altruism was but a beautiful idea that also belonged to a, a phantasmal place, perhaps cuddled in with all those unicorns we don't look for anymore. With merciful patience, a slow and dispassionate surrender beckoned from those questions I feared for so long. It asked me about altruism. Can perfect selflessness be reconciled with even a basic understanding of free will? Don't we inevitably choose our actions to meet some preference, desire, or need of our own? Does this relegate true altruism only to some sort of problematic, self-sacrificial coercion? For many, there is much more to this debate, but I have put this dear friend to rest. I recognize it now as a word as valiant as it is false. For me, for so long, it was a mirror parading as a window. You see, this word fails when it presents our reality as divisible into self and other. When, at the heart of it, there is ultimately no distinction, either at the most particular or at the grandest of scales. I act in the service of my beloved, not out of selflessness or selfishness, but from a place of awareness, from a consciousness that my own interests and my own identities are manifestly, inextricably entangled with those around me. I serve because my needs are always connected to your needs. The polarity of selfish versus selfless has dissolved. In its place, we find something more sober, more humane, more achievable. When we act as if we are separate, whether by ignorance or trauma, we do so to our own detriment. Short-sighted actions that will inevitably damage our loved ones or our loved ones' loved ones in this closed system, even if we don't realize it before we die. When we serve one another from an understanding of our interconnection, our actions skew towards wiser investments in our collective future. We are, each of us, made up solely of biology and experience that we necessarily share with others. How foolish are we to posit separation when we so completely constitute and define one another? There's only we. There's no I. There's no you. These words, I and you, they belong with the unicorns, too. Thank you. Thank you, Mr. Tsu. Will the Senate please come to order? Madam Clerk, please call the roll. Senator Baker? Senator Chang? Senator Dela Cruz? Excused. Senator English? Senator Favela? Senator Gabbard? Excused. Senator Harimoto? Excused. Senator Ihara? Senator Inoue? Senator Kahele? Senator Kanuha? Senator Keith Agaran? Senator Keoho Kalole? Senator Kidani? Senator Kim? Senator Moriwaki? Senator Nishihara? Senator Rhodes? Senator Riviere? 
Senator Ruderman? Senator Shimabukuro? Here. Senator Taniguchi? Excused. Senator Thielen? Senator Wakai? Here. Mr. President? Present. 21 present, four excused. Thank you. The chair has read the journal of the preceding day and approves the same. Are there any introductions this morning? Senator Keohu Kaloli. Thank you, Mr. President. Uh, in the gallery today uh, are students from Kailua High School, uh, freshmen, sophomores, juniors, and seniors here uh, with Student Activities Coordinator Sherry Hanoa as part of the Kailua High School Leadership Program. Can they please all rise and be welcomed by the Hawaii State Senate? Thank you. Thank you. Further introductions? If not, Senator Chang. Thank you, Mr. President. Colleagues and guests, a great amount of microplastics end up on our shores every year. They produce poisonous gases, leach toxins, and are harmful to us, animals, and our environment. Kailua resident Ray I. Vazian III is a former combat engineer who served eight years active duty in the Marine Corps. He was stationed at Camp Pendleton, California from 2009 to 13, and here from 2013 to 17. Before he retired from the Marines, Ray purchased a house because he wanted to make Hawaii his home, as he loves this land and the people that inhabit it. After the Marines, Ray immediately immersed himself in school and began his journey in attaining a degree in global environmental science through the University of Hawaii. It was at UH that he started getting more involved in different outreach programs, clubs, and giving back to the community. And it was at a beach cleanup where his new adventure really began. Distressed by the amount of debris on our shores and armed with an engineering background, Ray designed an invention for removing microplastics from our beaches called a buoyancy separation device. His invention, constructed of easily attainable materials, was made available online for others to replicate. After realizing that more was needed, Mr. Ivazian created a new methodology for assessing shoreline marine debris accumulation and found a way to separate small pieces of wood, leaves, and grass from the collected microplastics using an underwater vacuum chamber. Through these novel approaches, Mr. Ivazian was able to quantify microplastic particles that had never been observed or removed before. He then went on to create a STEM-based curriculum for different grade levels, which allows Keiki to create a buoyancy separation device, participate in a beach cleanup, extricate natural and synthetic material in the vacuum chamber, and then separate it into different size categories to add to our understanding of shoreline marine debris accumulation. This curriculum is allowing students to learn firsthand about the science of the sea and the severely detrimental impacts of microplastics. Mr. Ivazian received the Sherwood Maynard Award from the University of Hawaii for the Marine Option Program Symposium Project with the Largest Oceanic Impact. After reading about Mr. Ivazian's mission and his inventions, Lucas and Sophia Magel, Hahaione Elementary students, were inspired. The siblings created a slideshow that they presented to their school's PTSA requesting funding for materials to build a few of Mr. Ivazian's devices with their classmates. They were articulate, informative, and confident in what they were proposing. The PTSA was impressed and awarded Lucas and Sophia the funds. Using Mr. Ivazian's blueprint and with guidance from the Hahaione STEM teacher, Scott Kunihiro, the Miggles set off to build the first microplastics device as a family. The first buoyancy separation device build and beach trial went off without a hitch. Seeing real results and realizing the impact this could make, Sophia and Lucas immediately thought about what worked and what could be improved for the next round. Sophia and Lucas then demonstrated the device to some of their classmates during a school field trip. That group beach cleanup became the first of many gatherings to come. Sophia and Lucas formally started a club called the Green and Blue Crew, which focuses on helping our oceans and our earth. The Green and Blue Crew started a new recycling program at Hahaione Elementary, and they hoped to be able to eliminate plastic forks in the cafeteria. 
Today, we honor and commend Ray Ivazian III, Lucas and Sophia Magel, and Scott Kunihiro for their work to remove microplastics from our shores. Their efforts are an inspiration to others, creating a movement to spread awareness, rehabilitate our shorelines, and make a real difference in the world. Will you please stand to be recognized? We also have with us today the following people who came to show their support, and please stand when your names are called. We have the parents of Sophia and Lucas, Diana Dayrit and John Magel. We have... We have Lisa Jack and her children, Torin and Talon Jack from Makakilo. Not here. Oh, here. Okay. The Surfrider Foundation, Protea Zero Waste, Lanikai Brewing, Treehouse Co-working Space, Wastewater Alternatives and Innovations, Rogue Waves, Center for Marine Debris Research, Windward Community College Faculty, and University of Hawaii Faculty. Please stand and be recognized. <laughs> Mr. President, at the appropriate time, may I ask for a recess to greet our honored guests. As again, we have a short agenda. We'll quickly finish uh, and then greet our guests after adjournment. Uh, so glad when they were asked to stand up and their parents were introduced. Sophia and Lucas actually smiled for the first time. You got very great smiles. You look so serious at the at the beginning. Congratulations. Do we have any further introductions? Not, Madam Clerk. Governor's message number three transmits a proposed draft for a, uh, for a measure to fund the agreement reached for collective bargaining unit four. File. Governor's message numbers 621 to 624 transmit nominations to the Hawaiian Homes Commission for referral to committee. Governor's message numbers 621 to 624 are referred to the Committee on Hawaiian Affairs. House Communication Number 354 informs the Senate that the House has disagreed to the amendments proposed by the Senate to House Bill 361, Senate Draft 2. File. Referrals and re-referrals. Referrals and re-referrals are made in accordance with the supplemental order of the day, which may be distributed to your offices later today. No further business, Mr. President. Are there any announcements? If not, the chair has won. Immediately after greeting our honored guests, all members of the Senate are asked to report to the caucus room. Senator Kaheli. I move that the Senate stand adjourned until 11.30 a.m. tomorrow. Senator Favela. I second that motion. It's been moved and seconded. If there are no objections from the members, the Senate will stand adjourned until 11.30 a.m. tomorrow.